Welcome, Welcome to Own or Disown, where tech decisions are made easy. easy, easy, easy. Are you after a lightweight laptop that, you know, looks well in the business environment and also can game fairly well, actually? Well, Lenovo did send me their IdeaPad Pro 5 to check out. Now, before I jump into that review, a quick word from today's sponsor, Tennisshare. I bet at some point in time you've tried to open up a video only to find that frustrating message that it says it's either corrupted or the file type is not supported. Well, what causes this to happen anyway? Well, it can be caused by uh, video recording software being shut down prematurely, interruptions in a uh, file transfer which causes errors, or even a memory card being removed whilst, whilst the device is still recording. And fixing it is easy using the Tenoshare 4D Dig Video Repair software. Just click on Add Video or drag and drop the corrupted video file and then click on Repair. It really is that simple. Now, once finished, the software gives you an opportunity to preview it to make sure it has worked before you save it to a location of your choice. I also like how the repaired file name has the word repaired in it, so you can easily distinguish it from the original file. Open up the repaired file and you will see that it is now easily opened and able to play. Not only can the Tenorshare 4D Dig software repair video files, but it can also repair corrupted photos, um, office files such as Word, PDFs, um, Excel, PowerPoint and zip files, as well as audio files, corrupt Outlook data files and DLL errors. The software can also be used to enhance your videos and photos to make them look sharper and less blurry. I do like the wide range of file repair options that they give you, as well as the wide range of supported video formats, which include MP4s, AVI, MOV, MKV, and many more. And you can try the software for free. And if you're happy with it, you can buy it for as low as $35.95 for a one month license, or $45.95 for a one year license, or $79.95 for a lifetime license with lifetime free upgrades. I recommend checking it out and I put a link in the description below for the software. So welcome back. So yeah, yeah, the uh, Lenovo IdeaPad Pro 5 is an excellent laptop if you want uh, something uh, that you can do some light gaming on and you, know, you, you want something that's quiet, you know, perhaps in an office environment, in a library or, you know, your classroom. It's, it's all aluminium build. It's anodized uh, silver and it doesn't leave any fingerprints. So it's very clean looking. I do like it a lot. Uh, now, looking at the specs of my unit, I have the uh, Core Ultra 9 185H, 5.1 gigahertz peak. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually a 45 watt chip, but it does have a, um, a PL1 of 65 watts, and that's a 22 thread chip. Now, you can, uh, I've got one uh, terabyte of SSD in here. Now, it does have two slots inside, and uh, the terabyte I have here is one of the, the, the short SSDs, um, but you do have a regular 2280 full-size uh, M.2 SSD slot open for any upgrades. And uh, inside I've got also six, uh, 32 gigabytes of low-powered DDR5 5600 megahertz of RAM uh, with two sticks. And I've got RTX 4050. Now it's a 90-watt 4050. So looking at the pricing, the Intel model starts at $1,172, whilst the AMD model starts at $899. Now the Ryzen model goes up to the uh, Ryzen 7 8845HS, um, 8 core, 16 thread CPU, boosting up to 5.1 gigahertz. Uh, it's a 45 watt chip. Uh, the on their website, the Intel models, um, you know, up to go up to core Ultra 755H, uh, which is three uh, is 300 megahertz slower than this one. So that goes up to 4.8 gigahertz, while my uh, 185H goes up to 5.1 gigahertz. So I think the difference there with the, uh, the 155H will perform very similar to the uh, Ryzen chip there. This will be marginally faster, about 3 to 4%, but the Ryzen one is cheaper. Um, and that's uh, the Ryzen one can be configured with a 4050 on their website. Go figure. So that bring that up to $1,326, whilst uh, the Intel model here would be at least $1,500. I believe they do have some discounts as well, which are bring them down a little bit. So, of course, just check their website. But I think the Ryzen one would be, would be the way to go because, you know, you're probably going to get slightly better battery life as well. Now, I got uh, 7 hours, 20 minutes of runtime on this, which I thought was pretty decent. 
and that was uh, set at fifty percent brightness. And as usual, you know, at fifty percent brightness, in you know, Lenovo bring their their, their their brightness down quite a bit. So we're looking at sixty eight nits at fifty percent brightness, and uh, at hundred percent, three hundred sixty two nits. So it's fairly reasonably bright at hundred percent brightness, and uh, the distribution of the brightness is very good. We're looking on about three hundred fifty six nits in the center, and you know, something similar around the, the, the corners, dropping down to like 343 nits in the bottom left-hand corner. And in terms of the colour gamut, the gain was great, 100% of sRGB, 95% of Adobe RGB, and 100% of the P3 colour space. And uh, the colour accuracy was also great, averaging a uh, 1.1 Delta E. So yeah, the panel is a 16-inch. Now there are two, uh, two types. There's a regular IPS with 2560 by 1600 and um, that goes up to about 350 nits, again 120 hertz. Or like this panel, which is a 16 inch 2K 2048 by 1280 with 120 hertz uh, refresh rate as well. And I say the ghosting is very good on this, spot on, no backlight bleed, perfect blacks, you know, OLEDs are to die for. So I'd probably opt for this one rather than the IPS. So the keyboard deck, very clean looking. This is a no fingerprints. The keys are perhaps a little bit on the shallow side, but they're very, I find them very good to use. Um, separate number pad, and you do have one button press at the top for changing the volume and, and the brightness, and a nice one-piece uh, touchpad. I think Lenovo do make some of the best ones there, very responsive. The keyboard lighting is white only, and it can uh, only just be turned on and off. And above the keyboard here, you do have some air intakes. Now, the other parts of the cooling, are uh, you've just got some vents here just underneath the hinge and uh, there's actually two heat sinks there you don't have any at the sides you um, you have two heat pipes but it does cool well which we'll get to it in a second now looking at the ports here on the left hand side you do have a uh, thunderbolt 4 you have a usb-c 3.2 gen 1 which also has power delivery so you can charge up your laptop using a usb-c brick that's just good you also have an HDMI 2.1, which supports 4096 by 2160 at 60 hertz. And at the back is their rectangular power slot there. On the right hand side, you have two USB uh, Type A 3.2 Gen 1s. You've got the combo uh, headphone mic jack, and you have uh, an SD card reader, which, you know, the card sticks three quarters of the way out. And I found that the hinge to be pretty decent, it's quite stiff. But now you, you do have a touch screen here, which, which is very responsive, by the way. But of course, when you tap the screen, it does wobble a little bit. Now, upgradability in terms of storage, you do have uh, two SSD slots. You do have a, the, the standard one, which I've got here is a one terabyte. It starts at 512, but if you up it to one terabyte, it's a, the smaller M.2 slot. And you do have a, a spare full size uh, 2280 size uh, slot, which you can upgrade as, as well. And as I say, it's got uh, 32 gigabytes of, of RAM already. So it's pretty snappy. Now, in terms of the, the hard drive read speeds, I've got uh, 6,168 megabytes per second read and write speeds of uh, 4,663 megabytes per second. So, you know, that was all right. And uh, as for the speakers, they do fire down here at the sides. So they're two, you got two, two watt speakers and around about 74 decibels or so. I'd say they're pretty average. Um, perhaps not the best bass, um, but it's a fairly thin chassis, and, and, and certainly it's, it's very lightweight. I measured uh, four pounds seven ounces, you know, by itself. And if you include the 170 watt power brick, which is very small by the way, you get uh, five pounds eight ounces. So it's very portable, good for travel. Uh, unfortunately, it did fail my latency mon test. At the top, you do have a 1080p webcam with a privacy shutter, which is standard for lots of Lenovo laptops. So this is what it looks and sounds like. So we do have a 1080p uh, webcam, and I think it's pretty good. Also, of course, it has a Windows Hello, and that works flawlessly as well. Now, it has a, a time of flight sensor, seemingly, and uh, but I think the microphone picks up the audio good. This is what it's like when you get typing. So now let's have a look at how it uh, performs. We'll look at some CPU benchmarks, uh, gaming performance, and look at the thermals. In uh, Cinebench uh, 2024, it scored a multi-core score of 1,005 and a single core score of 108. And the CPU is at 84 degrees and the uh, at 65 watts. So that's not bad. In terms of how it compares, it's actually not that far behind the uh, desktop i7-13700F, uh, 
which I thought was pretty decent. Um, all in all, I think it is a good performing chip there. At Cinebench uh, R23, multi-core score, 17,340. And like I said, that uh, Ryzen chip, um, the 8845HS, uh, I think got, gets around about uh, 16,600 points. So it's not that far behind, really, this one. And as you can see, it's pretty much on par with the i7-12700H. And the single core performance on Cinebench R23, 1,884 points, which is good. Pretty much bang on par with the Ryzen 9 7945HX. So great. So just taking a look at Handbrake, where I encode a 4GB 1080p file to MP4. Um, the uh, Lenovo IdeaPad Pro 5 took uh, 11.7 minutes. That's pretty decent. That's on par, really, with the i9-13900H, which was in the MSI St Stealth Studio 17. And the temperature, you know, the CPU was uh, running at 89 degrees and uh, 65 watts. Looking at uh, Time Spy CPU score, got to 12,076 points, which again put it on the same as the i7-12700H. I mean, if you want to compare it to like a 13900HX, yeah, it's it's going to be a bit less, but I think for all intents and purposes, this 22-thread chip is very good. So let's take a look at uh, some GPU synthetic performance numbers here. Time Spy GPU score of 8,372, and uh, that puts it pretty much on par to 105 watt RTX 3060. And in 3 Mark Port Royal, we've got 4,721 points, which, as you can see, of course, is behind the, the 4060, but I wouldn't say it was that much, you know, below it. So, like, very good. So, take a look at Cyberpunk 2077. Um, this is, of course, at the native resolution of 2048 by 1280. Now, why I wanted to uh, determine here, you've got 4050, so you may want to help it out with some frame generation if you want to use ray tracing, right? So, what does it look like in terms of quality and what frame rate do you get compared to if you don't have that and just use ultra settings? So, at the top, we have ray tracing ultra, DLSS set to perform for performance, but with frame generation on. And that uh, below that, we've got just regular ultra settings with no ray tracing or any uh, performance scaling at all, like DLSS or anything. So you can see what you think looks the best. Now, in terms of uh, benchmarks, there wasn't that much difference between the two. We've got 41 FPS with ray tracing ultra, DLSS performance and frame generation on. And regular ultra settings, we've got 47. And of course, as you lower the quality settings, you're going to get better frame rates. So at low settings, we've got 87. So Far Cry 6, we tested uh, this at uh, ultra settings with the G GPU overclocked, 200 megahertz on the core, 150 megahertz on the memory. Um, we did get a slight performance boost compared to uh, regular ultra settings with just a stock GPU, uh, but nothing really to write home about. Um, so 81 FPS at ultra, going to uh, 111 FPS at low settings. So the CPU ran at 76 degrees and at 31 watts, and the GPU 72 degrees and 75 watts. Now in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, again with the GPU overclocked, we got 68 FPS, exactly the same as it was uh, using ultra high settings with no overclock, so 68 there, and uh, dropping it down to medium settings, we got 107, so we get some quite decent scaling there. In Dead Space Remake, you have the option of using DLSS to you know, help it uh, give more performance, as well as FSR2, as well as just not using anything like that at all. So I wanted to show what the difference is, so let's take a look at that. With ultra settings, anti-aliasing on, TAA uh, set to low, we get 50 FPS. Uh, ultra settings, DLSS set to performance, 92 FPS, and using ultra settings and FSR2 also set to performance, we got 92 FPS. So that's interesting. FSR2 and DLSS performed exactly the same and getting nearly double the frame rate as you would do with, with without it at all. And it's definitely worth having because it looks the same to me as well. Uh, the GPU, uh, 73 degrees, 70 watts, and the CPU, 77 degrees, 35 watts. So again, it runs nice and cool. Now, finally, we have Watch Dogs Legion. Now, of course, with this one, you start running out at, uh, of video memory when you're running at like very high settings. So here, at very high settings, we, uh, we're using uh, 6,661 megabytes when it only has, the 4050 only has uh, 6 gigabyte of uh, VRAM. Consequently, you do take a bit of a hit, but it wasn't that bad. I still got uh, 75 FPS, 
um, high settings. Uh, it got 87. And then it starts, I think the CPU must start bottling it, uh, uh, being a bit of a bottleneck, because at low settings, we didn't get any improvement over medium. Now, the CPU we ran at uh, 85 degrees and 44 watts, whilst the, the, the 4050 at 70 watts. So it doesn't get, I didn't see it ever get to the 90 watt mark, but it was always running cool, and I quite liked the performance. For some reason, I couldn't get Halo Infinite to load. Now, one strange thing I got was the screen did flicker when I was in Overwatch. And playing on battery was pretty good as well. Far Cry 6 Ultra settings, getting about 60 to 70 FPS versus about 80 when it was plugged in. Now, let's take a look at the Lenovo Vantage software and see what it offers in here. So you've got, uh, in, under the mode setting, you can uh, set it to uh, start using AI to detect what you're doing to try and improve performance. Under the power mode, you can choose adaptive power, which will automatically uh, track your application usage and determine what's best. Battery saver mode and performance mode. Now, of course, all the testing I did was in performance. And you have all kinds of settings to uh, maximize the life of your battery, as well as the ability to overclock your GPU up to a maximum of 200 megahertz on the G uh, on the uh, core and 300 megahertz on the memory. Under the display tab, you've got various eye care settings you can do here, and also whether you want to dim the screen if you go away under the presence uh, detection. Under the sound tab, you've got various uh, options from uh, dynamic, movie, music, gaming, that type of thing. I also like how you can uh, check for updates very easily. So there you have it. How would I sum it up? Well, I do think it's a very good machine. It's uh, it's lightweight. Um, it's very clean looking, no fingerprints. It's uh, quiet. Um, you can game pretty well. And of course, I you know you can make good use of uh, the DLSS or FSR, uh, as well as uh, the frame generation, if you like frame generation, just to give it a little bit extra performance. Uh, so I think the 4050 is, is, is very capable in this day and age, really. Uh, in terms of pricing, I think I prefer the AMD model. I mean, I've not tested it, of course, but I suspect you'll get better battery life. It's a little bit cheaper, and I don't think you're going to get that much hit in in, in performance. Um, I don't. Uh, so the webcam, fantastic, great for meetings, good microphone. So all in all, gets a, a thumbs up for me. Um, so let me know in the comments what you think and see if you like it. And thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, remember to subscribe and hit that like button. Much appreciated. See you next time. Bye.